What is up everybody, Gilly Sniper 99 here bringing you a brand new Let's Play. Mount and Blade Warband. This game, to put it simply, it is amazing. It is definitely one of my favorite games I have ever played, and I've only had it for a couple days. I, it is that good. If you have not played this, you need to play this. You need to get this game. If you are a fan of the Total War series or any of the medieval like chivalry series, you will love this. It combines chivalry. Chivalry, the uh, online game where you fight medievally against other people, like first person or third person or whatever, it combines that with Total War bringing you all of the uh, single-player RPG action while uh, heading your own army, fighting with them. It is amazing, and I am going to start a new game with you all. Now, I am using the Diplomacy mod on this, which adds a whole bunch of content. I recommend you guys use it. I don't know exactly off the top of my head all of the add-ons, but I know it helps a lot. There are, uh, it makes the games harder in one aspect, like horses get slower as their health decrease, but in other aspects you can ally yourselves with other nations, you can have defense packs, you can have treaties, you can have different stuff, which is not available in the normal game. So I recommend you download, um, it's actually available on the, um, the actual website that you, that makes this game. They uh, offer it for download there, but I got this off of Steam uh, because it was on a summer sale, and I am so glad I did. Okay, guys, I'm going to start a new game with you right now. Those are the Roadokes right there that you just saw. They are amazing. They're my favorite faction, uh, but more on that later. Okay, so... Uh-huh. Male nobles have somewhat easier start, but women and commoners can attain all the same goals, and in fact may have a much more interesting or challenging early game. I like challenging and interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go male because I am male. Um, I was born in a faraway land, uh-huh. Your father was, okay, so if you do noble, you will have an easier time because the other nobles will accept you faster. If you do one of these, uh, mainly one of these three. Oh, well, I guess this one too. But you will have a, a harder time because the other nobles will not consider you a noble status to be a vassal to a king or actually a king yourself. So I am going to make it harder myself. I'm going to be a hunter. Okay. So we're, yeah, making arrows, living off of the woods. Sounds good. Poaching game. Mm-hmm. So, in my early life, I spent it as a craftsman apprentice. As a boy growing up a childhood, you apprenticed with a local craftsman to learn a trade. Mm-hmm. I became a journeyman. Fully paid craftsman. Uh-huh. Then, as a young adult, life became... Life changed, as it always does. You became... Mm, game poacher. <laughs> I like archery in this game, and you'll see why it's a big part of this game. Okay, so, yeah. You can read this if you guys want, just pause it at any time. I'm not going to spend the time reading all of this I have before, but I'm not going to read it out loud because I don't want to bore you too much. Alright, but soon everything changed, and what decided to strike you out on your own adventure? What makes you... what made you take this decision was... Personal Revenge. We are going to go all medieval badass on people. Alright. You want vengeance. You want vengeance. What was done to you cannot be undone, and these debts can only be paid in blood. I could not have said it better than this game just did right there. Let's do this. Alright, we are going to do realistic mode. No quitting without saving. So no matter what, you can't just quit out of the game and redo a battle. I can't edit the video to go back and, like, redo battle. If I lose, then I lose. But you can always, uh, even if you hit rock bottom, you can always come back. It's just harder. But you'll see that once I hit rock bottom. <laughs> okay. Now, a character name. I already picked out one. Let's go Edgar. 
Oaken Shield. Edgar Oaken Shield. He is going to be our leader. He will lead our kingdom to victory. All right. Let's see. We have strength of 11, agility of 8, intelligence of 5, and charisma of 6. Now, you, starting out, you do have these points. And if you put more in intelligence right here, these increase right here. So right now, strength uh, obviously deals with how much damage you do. Agility deals with horse archery, riding, it says in the top right hand corner of the screen also. So all shields and stuff like that, so this is very important too. Intelligence. Now intelligence and charisma, these two are super important. These are the most important um, attributes of the game just because these are very beneficial. But later on in the game, you're going to be relying on your army a lot more than you are yourself. Now, as I say that, you are going to be the main support of your army, likely killing around 80, at least 80 people per, um, like, battle later on. But that's going to be with archery, and again, if even if you're um, killing like 80 to 100 people, it's not going to mean shit if the enemy still has 900 people that your army can't kill. So with intelligence, this is very important because it has the surgery and um, tactics and stuff like that, which I'll get into when I talk about skills, but this one is very important for army. And so is this uh, charisma because of leadership. Um, now, let's see, I'm going to put three in intelligence which you saw that raised my skill points by three and I'm gonna put one in charisma now as you level up I am level one as you level up you get more tributes you get more of this and this um, so anyways iron flesh raises your hit points uh, I mean it can be important but again you will rely on your army a lot more than you will yourself so it's better to spend where you need to spend Power Strike is a good one, it increases melee damage. Uh, power Draw is a very good one, because this is what you're going to be doing most of your supporting with. Supporting your army, because if you die during this, well you don't really die, if you get knocked out during a battle, your army automatically retreats, no matter what, and you do lose casual take casualties on that retreat. And yeah, so it is very vital that you stay alive, so you need to either have a gigantic shield when you go into battle or stay back for most of the battle or be careful so you always need a ranged weapon so I'm going to go ahead and raise my power draw to three um, power strike it is important I only have seven skill points though so I will um, leave that for right now all right so we have oh and power throws for like javelins and stuff like that which are not as important to the player but it can be later on like when you're run when you're in long sieges and you're running out of ammunition and you're just picking up whatever you can throw or shoot so yeah all right weapon mastery as you can see in the top right hand corner it increases your proficiencies the max uh, level of them by you know certain amount 40 is it yeah by 40 each so we aren't going to worry about that right now um, that's more important later on. Shield, this is very important because your shield can break. Every shield can break, and when it does, you are left defenseless. So you definitely want at least one in the beginning. We'll put one there because uh, the shield is your lifeline. It is your health because it can block arrows and everything, and arrows are your biggest fear in this game. If you do not have a shield, you will die. All right, athletics improves your running speed important but I can't even upgrade it because uh, my agility isn't high enough so that's all right uh, not as important though so riding yeah that's important maneuverability and enables you to ride higher horses you can upgrade your horses and also buy your companions horses and yes you do have companions in this game um, I'm not gonna upgrade it yet because you start out with horse and I'm good for right now horse archer you definitely want horse archery because you will be doing most of your shooting from the horse and you want to be uh, at least a little bit accurate um, looting you get more loot as you know it says training this is very important especially early game every day um, every troop that has a lower level than you or the same gets trained a little bit so um, that can level up like 
uh, once you get higher level, like once you get to like around level 20 or something and you have large armies and you start taking mass casualties and you start recruiting like 50 people at a time, they're like 50 farmers and after a day of running around with you, they level up automatically. So this trainer is very important. Um, I might come back and put an extra skill in it, depends on how much I have. Tracking, I never really found a use for it so far. It might come useful later. Um, it just like leaves little footprints, little arrows showing where armies go. I haven't been able to find out how to use it effectively, but yeah. Tactics, so uh, this increases your advantage and advantage, battle advantage, lets you have more troops on the battlefield at once. So your army can be like a thousand plus units all together with other people in the battle, but you can only have so many units on the battlefield at once. So say I have 200 units in my army and I go into battle with somebody, uh, if I have like low tactics, only 50 of them will appear on the battlefield at once. And once they start running down to like say 25, 10, then I get reinforcements and like another 40 pop up so I can only have a certain amount on the field at once and reinforcements keep re arriving so that's what happens with that so you need high tactics I'm going to plop one at tactic tactics pathfinding increases your party speed this is very vital later on in the game especially it helps you running away from enemies or chasing down enemies which are all very important all right, let's see, we have spotting increases how far you can see because there is like a fog of war type effect. It's not evident, like there isn't fog everywhere because you can see the entire map, but you just can't see enemies from like far, like you'll, you'll see. And at night it gets worse, like the spotting range goes down. Inventory management, how much stuff you can hold. Wound treatment, this is important when a member gets wounded. It's, uh, if you have a higher wound treatment, they get in the battlefield faster like uh, get back in the game because uh, once they're wounded they ha they like don't even count in your army anymore until they're back in the game um, surgery this one is super important um, let's surgery uh, so they have a four percent chance that a member mortally struck party member will be wounded rather than killed so if a arrow pierces their face and they're supposed to die if you have a high surgery they have more of a chance of just getting knocked out from that arrow piercing their face don't ask me how but it is a very important skill to have because once you get high level people you do not want them dying and then have to replace them with a farmer it sucks all right first aid it, it deals with you healing um, not as important as the others because your army is what, what really needs it Engineering, uh, you can improve siege equi uh, equipment like uh, how fast you do it and also improve your fiefs. This is important, but I usually let my, um, my companions deal with engineering because uh, I can focus mine on leadership and stuff. Persuasion, again, uh, I mean, it's okay. I, it's better later on in the game. I can tell you that, but like once you become a king, you'll have vassals and you'll want them to have more persuasion, which you can make a companion a vassal and that's why you train them in persuasion. Prisoner management, this is very important, especially early on in the game, excuse me, because you can take prisoners of the enemy and you can sell them and this gets you a lot of money early on and also later on. Leadership, this is perhaps one of the most important um, ones of important uh, skills of the game. Every point increases your maximum number of troops you can command by five, and it also reduces troops' wage and increases your morale, your party's morale. So this is very important, very important. And But right now we're going to do prisoner management because that way we can start getting prisoners because without one at least one it was zero without one you can't get any prisoners so now we can have five at a time and go and sell them okay so and then trade every level of the skill reduces your trade penalty by five percent so you get better trade values 
Um, now, I'm not exactly sure how trading works. I think that if you go to one town and buy spices and stuff, and put it with your army, and then travel back across the map to another town, they'll sell for a way higher price. I'm not exactly sure on that, but we will check that out in, during this Let's Play. Okay, and then finally, these are the proficiencies. Now, my archery is already 83 because of the stats that I chose um, back before, being a hunter and whatnot. And I am going to put the rest in one-handed because uh, two-handed I never use, pole arm, arms I never use, crossbows, and I mean, we once you hit the, the cap on the mastery, weapon mastery, once you hit this cap, uh, you can't put any more, like uh, as you said, saw um, earlier, uh, when I was putting in points, I could not put any in archery because I already hit the cap. So once you do that, then you can start filling in the other ones and slowly getting them up. And I'd say level them all up to at least 100 and then archery and one-handed as much as you can, like up to 420 is what I think the max is. But yeah, so that's what you want to do because in tournaments and stuff, you do use pole arms and crossbows and throwing and two hands. So you need to be... Um, proficient with each one. Okay. Now let's randomize this face. What? Who looks like Edgar Oakenshield? That definitely looks like Edgar Oakenshield to me. I like his hairdo. Let is, let's do that. All right. Um, now this is the kingdom of Swadia is uh, in medieval times and real the real world. It is like Britain. Uh, England and uh, France. Sorry, England and France. That is what uh, Swadia is. It has great armored knights. That's what they're famous for. Unfortunately, because of their map uh, placement, they usually get taken out very early in the game. Um, but I'll explain that later. Uh, the Vagers, they are like medieval Russians. Um, they have good archers. Uh, and also their... Um, Two, all of their troops, well, the most majority of their troops use two-handed weapons, so they are very deadly, but at the same time, they are very weak in the defense because they do not have shields, and shields in this game are what make your army, like, live, because arrows and everything, you need shields, so honestly, the Vagers, it's probably a harder starting position going to them because you have their troops. I'd say they are probably the weakest, um, the weakest civilization or faction. Um, although in a siege, I'd say that probably the uh, one of the either the Kurgit or the Serenade are the weakest because um, they're they're all good at horsemen. So is um, Swadia, but they're infantry is all right so they can do a siege but anyways um like kurgit they are known for their infantry or not infantry sorry their horseman ability like horse archers and they are completely useless in a siege because all horses you cannot ride horses in a siege battle they all just go immediately to infantry so yeah that is why um it is better for um, the Nords of the Rhodokes, to they are the two sieging nations. They are the best nations on the map, in my opinion, and that is why in all of my playthroughs, they have taken over the majority of the map, especially the start and towards the end. Okay, so as I said, here is Great Britain and France. This is uh, medieval Russia. And then the Kyrgyz Khanate, they are the Mongol Empire. So great horse archers and horsemen. Now the Kingdom of the Nords, they are the Vikings, medieval Vikings, and they have great infantry. They are the best infantry in the game. Although the, their infantry takes six, they have six tiers of infantry. And that's why they're so good because they have that extra sixth tier. Everyone else only has five tiers. And they, that is why they're, they have that extra little oomph in them. They're not invincible, but their shields are gigantic to start out with. And they're really hard to kill, especially in a siege. They are really good defenders. Um, the only problem with the Nords is that they cannot train any horsemen. They do not have horsemen. They have to go to another country for horsemen. 
Okay, so now the King of Rodok. This is my favorite nation uh, so far because they are like Italy. Usually I don't like Italy like in any of the Total War games or anything, but um, they have really good defenders. They are like Nords in the defending. Um, they aren't as good as attacking because Nords, uh, they're uh, Huskar Huskarls. They're uh, Nord Huskar. Huskarls, excuse me. Their Nord Huskarls are really good in attack and defense. But uh, the Rodoks, they are mainly defensive. They have giant shields and long spears, so if in any battle you just want to sit them still in any position, preferably like on a hill or something, so that they don't get charged by horsemen, or like straight behind one so that archers can't shoot them as much. But, anyways, their shields will protect them from archers and they can take a beating. And also, the Rodox have the best crossbowmen in the game and the best archers. For uh, like out of all the archers, they are the best at sieges because their crossbowmen have giant shields on their back, like in other games, uh, modeling Italy's uh, militias. And once they're reloading, they can um, take arrows to the back of their shield and not get hurt. So they have the best archers. Well, sorry, crossbowmen especially for sieges. So in my opinion, the Rodoks win for sieges, but the Nords are just as deadly. Okay, so finally we have the Serenade Sultanate. They are the Caesarians of the medieval world. They have really good cavalry. They are like Swadia, although I believe that they are better than Swadia because they also have good horse archers and other things like that. So yeah, they are King of Swadia, but on crack. And yeah, so um, the Kingdom of Suede usually gets taken out early uh, on in the game, and whoever, if, when you become a king, you will rebel against whoever you are uh, for. So I think that I'm going to help them out in the early game, because I think they're going to die no matter what I do, and that way I can reclaim their territory as my own kingdom. So I will have a harder time. Uh, being them, I believe, because of their map position, but we are going to do it. Alright, so, mm -hmm. occasionally too you catch sight of one of the great war horses that are the pride of the Swadian nobility. So as I said, they have great horses, and we will be using some of those. Alright, so Praven, its rooftops made golden by the last rays of the setting sun. Let us do this. Okay, you venture out onto the streets which are still deserted. All of a sudden you hear the sound that stands the hairs of your neck on end. The rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard. Okay. So as I am an archer to begin with, I do have a bow out and I also have an axe. All right, let's, there he is. Ooh, took damage there. And again. Let's go at this guy with an axe. And there is blocking in this game. You have to tailor it to wherever your enemy is swinging to. As I did there. So that is what it is the combat system. And you do have a limited amount of arrows and whatnot. Okay, Merchant of Praven. Okay, he takes us in his house. Speak to me, oh great mighty Merchant of Praven. Okay, he's giving us a proposition. Mm hmm. Again, if you want to read any of this, feel free to pause it and read, but I am not going to take the time to do it because I have read it before and I do not want to bother or bore you guys to death. Okay, so Calradia is the nation or I guess um, island that we're on, I guess, the continent that we're on, and it's divided between the different nations. And to win the game, you have to uh, defeat all the other nations and claim all their territory. So that is what we're going to try to do. So here is where we start the game. Once we have our own kingdom, we are going to look back to this episode, to this point right here, to this very I am interested. 
and this is where it all starts he gives you this hundred gold to start my own or our own army all right let's go hire some men to help him get back his brother i guess it was okay and the game is paused until you move your character and then it pauses again it's kind of it's real time as in once your character is moving all other characters move when your character stop moving all of the characters stop moving because the game is paused now here's the world map it is really big it is gigantic and each of these is little towns that can be attacked and claimed so right now this is the um, nation of uh, Swadia. It looks really big and menacing right now, but unfortunately, it will get hit hard because here is the Rodox. They are, as I said, my favorite nation. Um, they have the good spearmen, which will screw up the cavalry here. And yeah, they, the Swadians, have a really hard time fighting back against these guys because. Um, they're only good on open territory like the land that they have right here but this nation has the best defensive capabilities because they have really good spearmen and archers and they have lots of mountains and if you put all of their best troops on mountains no horse the horses can get to them but they're very slow they're at a walking pace which completely ruins their charge value so they can't do any damage well, they can do damage, but they'll likely get cut down by the crossbowmen of the Rodoks. So these guys usually push up into Swadian territory, and that's all fine and dandy, but now you have the Nords in the north. And these guys also have very good um, infantry, as I said, and they will push down. So these guys, as we are the nation of Swadia, or we are going to help the nation of Swadia because they will get screwed over. At least they have my other uh, playthroughs. Now here is the, um, oh, what are they called? Um, Kurjit, I guess. Yeah, they're the Russian people. Anyways, Kudan is their capital. Oh yeah, let's go through this. Um, I really don't know what is the capital of, I'm guessing Sargoth? Maybe, maybe tier. I don't know. I haven't played as them, so. Uh, let's see. I believe, yeah, Praven. Yeah, as you can see, King Harlos is in here. Praven is the capital of Swadia. And then Jekala is the capital of the Rodox. Now, my favorite territory ever is the Rodox territory, as I said, but my capital will definitely, once I get my kingdom up and going, I will definitely want to conquer the Road Oaks, and I will want to place this as my capital because this has the best terrain in this area for defense. Okay, um, next we have the, uh, gosh, I am forgetting what they are, let's see, um, okay, we, the Kurgit, oh yeah, oh, the Vagers, that's, that's the, uh, Viagers, Viagers. Vagers, whatever. Um, anyways, the Russians. Those are the uh, white. The Kurgit Khanate. Um, let's see how do we get out of this one. Resume traveling. Okay. So the this is the Vagers. The Kurgit Khanate are the um, purple, and they have all this land. They are very good horse archers. They usually uh, can they usually take out the Russians, so they usually claim all this territory up here. Although, the this is the Ser Caesarian Serenade, or whatever it's called, they usually push up in randomly in all three uh, places. They also mainly go for the Kurgit, so it's horse against horse. Right here, usually these guys win, because these guys have horse archers, but these guys win. Um, also, there's a lot of fighting that goes on in this area, this central area. And Durham is usually a really good fighting position because I believe that that is the most central city on the map. So that is like no man's land. And unfortunately, yep, it's Swadia who has the unfortunate um, map placement of touching every single faction 
and that is one thing that will lead to Swadia's demise. But hopefully we can at least help or do something for that, and if not, we will go down with them. <laughs> okay, and that's enough talk. I'm sorry this is going to be a really talking episode. Um, I would like to explain to you guys the game and whatnot, but now we can get started. I'm probably going to split this into different episodes, but um, this will be a lot easier to film than my Minecraft series, because for Minecraft I have to prepare, but I will literally just walk you through every step of my path towards building a kingdom and winning the game. So as I play, I'll just record it and voice over it like this, so it'll be great. 